All right, welcome back to Henry Cynical Tutoring and another video here in the Web Browsing Safely series. In this video, we're going to look at setting up the PyHole DNS blacklist service and how we can tie this in with our E2 Guardian solution to maximize browsing safety for our kids. In addition to added safety and security, this is going to provide the benefit of reduced advertising for anyone browsing while on your network. We'll cover how to set that up as well. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and click that wonderful bell so you can see more of my videos as they come out. And with that, let's start out by downloading the PyHole installation script itself. So let's come over here, we'll do a wget, pull this thing down, we'll make sure we can execute it, and we will execute it. It's going to prompt us for our user's password so it can sudo up to root and do its job. And it's going to start taking us through this process here. It'll prompt you for some, you know, not so useful things. But the first item you want to check off on your list here is uh, what upstream DNS provider to use. I suggest using Quad9, which is a service that's been provided by IBM. Uh, IBM and their partners have gone through some efforts to be able to Id identify malicious websites and domains out there that are causing trouble for users, and they've listed them out in, in, in this Quad9 service. Also, with DNSSEC, their resolver is verifying when it goes to look up a website's address that the actual, you know, real provider is giving that information back to, to it and it's not coming from some hijacked resource. So it helps uh, keep things clean, per se, and prevent people from spoofing and causing attacks. So we'll use that. The next thing to do is to select what lists you want to have enabled by default for the, the actual uh, PyHole uh, blocks, basically. So the PyHole doesn't really actually come with its own entries. You have to download third-party lists. So it starts you off with these six. The last one, it doesn't work. So comment that out, or just deselect it. And hit OK to proceed. Uh, you can choose default protocol information for IPv4 and v6, verify the IP address and the gateway are correct, and then just you know gloss over this little alert here. This is just warning you to not have IP conflicts, because if you have IP conflicts, your DNS resolution will suffer. So don't do that. Um, next thing to do is to just go through these little prompts, install the web, inter the web admin interface, yes please, install a web server to run the thing on, yep, need that as well, and lastly, login queries and at full detail. It will now start to do its install process, and in a few moments it will come back at you with a URL for the admin interface as well as a password, so we're going to grab those when they come up and toss them into our little note window there. And here we are, so grab the admin URL, insert that, grab the temporary password, and I say temporary, but you can leave it if you like. Uh, if you do want to change that password, I believe the command is pihole-a-p, and I, that will give you a prompt where you can adjust it as you see fit. But now, this thing is installed and running. Let's verify that. We'll do an NS lookup against analytics.google.com. We'll first target that towards Google themselves and we'll see we get results. Now, if we make it go to our own server, which should be our local host, we get nothing, so it's already been cut off. So it's, this tells us that the pilot is working. Whenever you do a resolution, you're going to see a log entry be created. And also, if you are being blocked by the pihole, if it's blocking that domain, then it'll return all zeros. This helps you filter out things and uh, identify false positives when they occur, which may happen depending on how aggressive you get with your block lists, as you can install as many as you like. So, we'll just jump over here first. We'll go and pull up the PyHole's administrative page, fire it in there to our browser, grab our password. You can see by default it blocks 91.6 thousand uh, domains. So that's pretty good. That's from those five uh, block lists that we installed by default. We'll just log in, and we'll be presented, we'll be presented with a bunch more options. If we uh, look down here, we have whitelist, blacklist. We also have tools, which has some useful stuff, and settings. So under settings is where we're going to go first, because we're going to add block lists to this guy. So first, we're going to see in here, there's a nice little entry box we can go and throw something into. If you go to this website here, which will appear down there for you, 
This contains a whole bunch of different re uh, a different GitHub repositories, which are maintained at different levels. Uh, this one here was updated, sorry, this one here was updated 10 days ago. So we can actually go and check this guy out. Uh, what's this one? I think it's uh, this guy here. This is, the, this is the YouTube ads. So if we, if we were to load this block list up, it should, in theory, reduce the number of ads we would see in YouTube. I won't test that directly, but let's just see what the process is like of adding this guy in. He's going to add it to the list at the end. It'll take you to the updating the update gravity page, which is sort of what it calls its, uh, I guess, block list updater tool. And it's going to go through all these lists. It'll you'll, you'll see here no changes detected on the ones that were already there, but then the new one, we have a, a retrieval successful message, and you can see that the number of entries has changed. So now the number of unique domains has been adjusted. This is giving you like the total domains that it found and then the unique ones because it just cares about what's unique. It's not going to put duplicates in there. If we go to the dashboard now, we'll see that we've moved up in the world to 114,000 entries of, of domains that are blot. Well, that's, that's pretty good. So what else can we do with this? Uh, there's other types of blocks we can, we can put in here. So on this guy's page, also listed in that first one we were at, that this th this one has uh, blocks from malware and other bad things, so we can further enhance, I guess, the blocks done by uh, like IBM. And uh, let's see here. I don't believe this one had a direct link. Maybe it did. No, this is just this blacklist.txt most likely is what we want to do. So if we go to blacklist.txt, and in here we can see all these lovely little domains. We can click on raw and then grab that URL, go back to our pie hole settings once again, and to block lists and just add them in. Let him do his thing. While he's doing that, I'll show you this other one you may want to note down. So if you're a parent and you're here to help your kids stay away from porn, well, this is the one for you. This listing here is maintained uh, somewhat frequently. It was last updated a few months ago and in like, I guess, the late start of this year, but it contains about 2 million entries that uh, will be added into our list here. So if we grab the heavy list, that's everything, and we copy that, go back to the pie hole, it's done its update already on the previous one we added. Let's look at, at the dashboard again there. Dashboard now shows 130, so there is a slight increase. I guess some of those domains were duplicates of what we already had, but that's okay. We'll go to settings and block lists, and we will paste in our little list here, do a save and update. And after this one, I believe our count will go up to above 2 million. So that's quite a bit. And there was one more I, added, I, I had added, excuse me, which is this Adios Ads by Alex. Again, this was listed from the GitHub uh, I guess listing. <laughs> so, but you can find these things almost anywhere. There's a lot of block lists out there you can select from. Just keep in mind the more you add, the more it is a, a chance that you'll have a false positive and you'll block something you may, might not want to block and like a, a page won't load properly anymore or at all. And so that's where being able to watch those log files over here is important because then you can correlate activities like a page not loading properly with uh, blot DNS entries that you can then whitelist. So we'll have a look at that next. So we'll go back to block lists. We'll add this guy up too. Let him do his magic. He's going to process and add this information to the list. So while that's happening, we'll go back to this, this uh, desktop. And this is a VM of mine that we've used before demonstration purposes and he currently isn't being filtered so if I go into my preferences and this is a nice thing if you installed this thing on the same server as the e2 guardian host then by default the uh, when you use e2 guardian it's going to utilize that same uh, it's going to utilize the actual pie holes blocking techniques because once pie hole installs it repoints local lookups to itself. 
which is what you want, it's a good thing. So now E2 Guardian, also running on here, will utilize the same I guess, Pi-hole DNS system and anything that's blocked will be blocked by the proxy. So we'll put that back on there. We'll go back over here. We'll save our changes here to re-specify in the proxy server. And we'll do a hard refresh, control shift R, and it should reload the page. And oh man, look at that. So it blocked so much stuff that the actual page's CSS content has gone and it looks like something from like the 1980s. All right, so we don't want that, obviously. Let's go back and see what happened here in our logs. And I can pretty much look at this and tell by the fact that this thing came up the most. This is probably the entry that we want to bypass. So we'll copy that into our clipboard, go back over to the Pi-hole interface and to whitelist. This is how you'll bypass things now. So if you had something come up like that, you just add it into the whitelist here. And now if we go back to the weather network page and we do a refresh again, control shift R, we have content. All right, there we go. And you'll note that all those little ads we saw before just, they aren't there. Oh dear, one got through. Darn, 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 darn. So like, could we block that? Let's find out. Uh, we will do a view image maybe. Hmm, so we might be able to block that if we add that domain, but there could be fallout. Let's find out, let's see what it does. All oh, right, I have to write it down. This is a VM, I don't have a paste buffer. That's shared with my master system. So we'll go over there, we'll go to blacklist. This is how you add your own entries, like individual domains. And we'll just copy that guy. Toss them in there, get rid of that extra spacing. And now this is cool because we can add an exact or a wild card in here. So we can like, we, we, we could block an entire, do, like, you know, actual domain and all its uh, subdomains, or we could block just an individual, in this case, subdomain. So we'll just do that, add exact. It's blocking this exact host entry. And if we go back to the weather network site, and we do a refresh, again, control shift R. Will it break anything else? Uh, not, not really, I guess it looks to be okay. Well, we, we did lose these things, so. But hey, the site looks a bit better, doesn't it? <laughs> There's less stuff on the screen, if that's what you're going for. So this is where you have a bit of control, right? You can do things that you like, but maybe you don't want to do this because now <laughs> Now all the little icons are gone for what the weather feels like and looks like and all that stuff. So we might want to undo that change. So we'll just erase that. Go back, do another reload, see what we get. And... Oh, maybe that was already blocked by some other entry of ours. Let's go and have a look here and see what's going on. What is causing that to happen? So there might be something else in here that's actually blocking that, or it's also possible that it's getting blocked by the E2 Guardian service. So how will we check for that? Hmm. Well, we can easily do that actually if we have to. We can go into settings, we can turn off the proxy, and we can open up our terminal window here. And if we go into this guy here, I can, oh, my DNS is still specified as Google's, so, unfiltered, so we want to change that, of course. We'll do a delete and insert the DNS information for our, our pie hole, and then go back up here. Oh, did I save that? Make sure I saved that. There we go. All right, we'll go back up there to our browser. Let's just do a refresh again here and just see. Yeah, yeah, so somewhere, in E2 Guardian, it was seeing these images and it was saying, I don't like those very much. And it was then blocking them as a result. So this is where, if this is like a dual solution you have going on, you have E2 Guardian and the Pi hole DNS blocking, you need to know how to troubleshoot this and how to isolate between the two of them. 
So again, if you wanted to verify that it was the E2 Guardian service causing this, turn off the proxy settings, go into your machine's DNS configuration, and specify to use the PyHole as your DNS resolver. Then you can see if it was the PyHole blocking it, which in this case it is not, and uh, you can then focus your efforts on troubleshooting in E2 Guardian to see what it's blocking and why why these are coming up. You could even do something like view image and then you can maybe uh, see, okay, well, we've got this information here to go by. You can now start looking for that inside the logs in either, in either well, in the e in, probably in like E2 Guardian rather. So that's how you get, that's how you sort of use this thing and how you, um, I guess, work around issues as they arise. So the next thing to look at here is how would you make this work for any host on your network by default, which you can do. So in your, I guess, router, whatever you may be using, there is usually going to be an option for you to adjust the DHCP server. That's the system that's going to be providing IP addressing to your clients on your network. And in, in this case, I'm on this uh, installation of PFSense. If I look at my uh, services, I believe, in DHCP server, this is, where, this is where I'll get to. I can go to my different subnets or my different networks, I guess, and I can then adjust anything that's assigned. So in this case, we have a DNS server being specified that was already set up before. I, have, I had a different instance of the PyHole software running. But if I was to change this to the 192.168.1.48 address that our test installation is running on right now, then I would be assigning this to the DNS entries for any client machine that came online to this network, be that a phone or a laptop or a desktop or even a smart TV, it'll be pushed through the pie hole for its DNS resolution. So if you, you know, get really um, aggressive with YouTube ad blocking, then you may be able to block out YouTube ads on your smart TV. Not bad. And you don't have to pay for it either. So this is sort of how we use this. It's how, how we can benefit from the combination of the pie, of the pie hole as well as the E2 Guardian service and uh, use it to help keep our, our you know, browsers clean of advertising and keep our kids from looking at unsafe things. And uh, yeah, we should be set and all good to go now. So once again, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like what's posted here. And also be sure to conf to like comment below if you have any questions about the pie hole configuration or if you have requests for anything else you'd like to see in future videos. All the best.